So now we'd like to move on to the mock lecture. It's presented by Associate Professor Otsuba Hironori. The lecture title is Game Theory and Human Behavior. Mr. Otsuba, please. Okay, thank you so much for the uh, introduction. Um, the, my name is Hironori Otsubo. Um, I'm Associate Professor of the Faculty of Global Management. Um, you know, there's a variety of the faculty members doing exciting research, but, you know, I was chosen to give you a mock lecture, so it's my great pleasure to give you a mock lecture on behalf of the university. Um, so today, um, my talk is about the game theory and human behavior, but after I chose this topic, you know, um, this topic is too broad um, to teach within 25 minutes. And so therefore, the, my goal is to um, um, give you some kind of rough idea of where, uh, what game theory is, and also some issues uh, raised by actual human behavior. So let me begin by um, asking you to think about uh, what you would do in the simple situation like this. Okay, so please think about this, the following situation. So there are two players or two people, if you want. So two players are given $10, um, 10 $1 bills, right? And then they split this money in the following two steps. Here's a step one. One player, let's call proposer, offers some portion of the money to the other player, okay? And the proposer's offers has to be one of the following um, dollar amounts, $1, $2, $3, $4, and up to $9. So there's nine possible choices. Now, step two, the other player, the called responder, so responder sees the offer and then decides whether to accept or reject the offer, okay? So you get the, the rule, the rule of the game. And then here is the rule, how to determine their earnings. So if the proposer Accepts the offer. <laughs> okay. Um, if the proposer, if the responder accepts the offer, then the responder gets the offered amount, and the proposer gets the rest. Okay. If the responder reject the offer, both get nothing, zero dollars. So here are two numerical examples. Example one: the proposer offers four dollars to the responder and then responder accepts the offer. So in this case, proposer receives $6 and a responder receives $4, right? Okay, so example two, the proposer offers $7 to the responder. And then this time, responder rejects the offer and then both get nothing, okay? So now, how would you play this game if you are either proposer or responder? So I prepare two questions so that you can, you know, play as, uh, you know, um, just experience this game. So let, let me read. Here's a question one. Imagine that you are like all audience, you are the proposer, the person who decides how much to offer to responder. Okay, so keep in mind that you have a $10, right? Choose a single dollar amount you'd like to offer to the responder. So $1, $2, and up to uh, $9. Now, I will give you the 30 seconds to submit your responses to this question. So could you launch the, the poll? Okay, hold on. Okay, so here's a, here's a poll um, to which you can submit your responses. You are the proposer and choose a single dollar amount would you like to offer to the responder? So seems I am the only person seeing uh, what's going on. Wow. Okay. 
uh, for some reason, uh, the, oh, okay, so clock is now about, oh, okay, 30 seconds already? Okay, so sorry, because of um, uh, time constraints, so let me close the poll now. Okay, so could you uh, share the results with the audience? All right, okay, so this is the results. Um, could you just scroll down a little bit so that I can see the whole range of offers? Or maybe I should do it myself. Okay. All right. Okay. So it seems to me that the uh, the thirty five percent of the participants chose five dollars. Okay. So like a splitting the ten dollars in half. Some nice people. It seems like there are some nice people. Uh, Seven percent of the audience offer nine dollars out of ten dollars to the responder. Right. At the same time, there are some people who offered kind of small amount to the uh, responder, like $1, $2, $3, $4, okay? So I can now see a um, wide range of offers in this kind of hypothetical experiment. So thank you so much. So now I'd like to move on to the next question, okay? Second question, now imagine that you are now the responder. You are no longer the proposer. You are the responder, okay? The player who decides whether to accept the offer, right? But now suppose the proposer offers you $2, okay? So your opponent offers you $2 out of $10. The question is, do you uh, accept or reject this offer? So again, I will give you 30 seconds to submit your responses to this question. So please start a poll. So you have a 30 seconds to submit your answers, responses. Wow. So 10 seconds left. Okay, wow, it's interesting. Okay, I think 30 seconds have passed. So could you stop the poll? Okay, thank you so much. Now, uh, let me uh, share uh, the result. Okay, so this is what happened. 64% of the participants chose to accept the $2 offer of $2. And 36% of the participants reject an offer of $2 and walk away with nothing, okay? All right, just, just, just keep in mind what happened. So let me uh, move on to next slide. By the way, I prepared uh, my predictions before this event. And this is a, a prediction for my uh, question one, most offers, range between $3 and $5. But in reality, uh, I saw wider range of offers um, in this hypothetical uh, event, uh, experiment. My prediction for the second question, some participant the rejected an offer of $2. Uh, if I remember correctly, 30 uh, something percent of the participants actually chose to reject an offer of $2. Okay, so I think I did a good job, all right? Okay, now here is a definition, kind of definition uh, of uh, the game theory, uh, which is the main theme of today's talk. So game theory is a study of mathematical models. So it involves mathematics that help us understand the behavior of the players in a strategic situations. The players uh, could be the people, firms, um, countries, organizations, groups, uh, um, those decision makers. Strategic situations, um, the strategic, situa strategic situation is the one in which what you can get or the outcome depends not only on your decision, your action, but also on the actions of the other people, okay? So in fact, strategic situations are ubiquitous in our society. So for example, 
I think, you know, um, the, the many uh, audience, the, the participants um, have some experience of playing with your friends, uh, like a chess or some other board games. So these are good examples of strategic situations because whether you win or not depends on what you do, but also what your opponent does, right? Other examples, for example, negotiation and resource management, auctions, uh, research and development, contracts, arms race, uh, traffic congestion, elections, you name it. So in fact, our society is a full of uh, strategic interactions and you experiencing every day, okay? <clears throat> and then game theory um, actually give us very valuable insights into what people would do in situations involving interdependence, right? Okay. The game you have just experienced, uh, which is called Ultimate Bargaining Game. Um, this game was first introduced by Werner Guth. Uh, he is a German uh, economist and experimental economist and two of his students in 1982. They conducted a series of classroom experiments and one of which was about this ultimate bargaining game. They tested whether actual human behavior would be uh, human subjects, human participants would behave in line with what game theory predicts. Okay, now let's find the game theory prediction for this ultimate bargaining game. So this diagram, uh, this is a tree diagram um, called a game tree. This is a graph representing the ultimate in bargaining game using the, the branches, right? So there are two players, the proposer and responder. Uh, this RESP stands for the responder. Nine branches stretching uh, from proposer, each one of which corresponds to uh, one, uh, the offer, right? So for example, um, uh, the middle, the very middle, the branch, uh, the $5 means the proposer offers, a, a propose an offer of a $5 to the proposer, okay? All right, and then um, the responders had the two choices, either accept or reject. So A stands for accept and R stands for reject. So this tree actually representing the structure of um, ultimate bargaining game. So now, in order to derive game theoretic predictions in this case, we need to assume that the players are self-interested. That means they only care about their own well-being. They don't care about how much other people earns. They only care about how much you yourself earns, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> so if the responder is a responder is a self-interested, then I would say responder should accept any offer. Why? Because any offer, I mean, any offer is higher than zero dollars, right? So if responder rejected, then responders ended up with zero dollars. On the other hand, accept the offer, then responder can walk away with the offer amount of money. Right? So therefore, the responder always accept offer. Now, <clears throat> proposer is also self-interested and also anticipate um, how responder behave. Then what is the optimal behavior for the proposer is to choose minimum offer, namely $1. So proposer offers $1 and a responder accepted. So proposer ended up with $9 and responder ended up with $1. This is what game theory predicts or analytical game theory predicts. So here's a summary of a prediction. So predicted behavior, the proposer offers $1, which is a minimum dollar amount. The responder always accept. In fact, 
um, the replication of this automated bargaining experiment has extensively uh, been done all over the world. And then um, the reported results are very regular. So according to the survey by Colin Kamira, uh, he's a very famous behavior economist um, and psychologist um, at Caltech University. The model and a medium, median offers usually 40% or 50% of the pie, in this case, $10, okay? So model and median offers usually $4 or $5. And the means are 30 to 40%, so which means $3 or $40, uh, $4. And offers below 20% or so are rejected uh, about half the time. So why did the proposer um, offer more than the minimum offer? Well, there's a many explanations. Maybe the proposer is kind of um, maybe, uh, con maybe concerned about fairness or just fear of rejection, right? And why did the responder um, to reject the small offer? Well, maybe, you know, there's a possibility that the responder or also um, the fairness concerned, concerned about the fairness. And so sacrificing uh, her own earnings to punish the greedy, the proposers. So there's a, there's a variety of explanations. So um, the important lesson from this experiment is that actual human, be human beings are uh, not really satisfying the assumptions required by analytical game theory. So there is a field the, called behavioral game theory, which incorporates experimental evidence and also psychological regularity into the game theory. And the behavioral game theory often and captures actual uh, human behavior observed in laboratory experiments. Now, I'd like to talk about one more example to which game theoretical analysis can be applied. Um, this is based on um, my own research about traffic congestion. So this is coming from the, my paper, um, still working paper um, in 2021. So let's consider the following situation. A total of 20 players live in a residential area and then travel to central business district every morning. Everyone wants to arrive at the central uh, business district at 8.50 a.m. Two modes of transportation to connect residential area and the central business district road and a rail, okay? So 20 players without any communication, they have to make a decision independently. What kind of decision? Two decisions, which mode of transportation to choose. The second, if choose to travel by car, at what time to depart from residential area? And then um, the, uh, the, they can choose uh, from uh, you know, uh, one, one minute after 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. So 60 choices. The road is a congested, congestible at the bottleneck along the road. Um, actually, I forgot to put uh, one important piece of information. The bottleneck can the process uh, one car per minute. So which means it takes uh, one minute for each car to pass through the bottleneck. If too many cars arrive at the bottleneck at the same time and then queue builds up behind the bottleneck. So there's a congestion takes place. So the railway on the other hand is not a congestible. So the train departs at 8.26 20, uh, a.m. and it arrives at the destination at 8.50 uh, a.m. So the cost of traveling by car is the sum of three types of costs early arrival cost, this means the cost of arriving too early. And second, late arrival cost, this is the cost of arriving too late. And then trouble, trouble time cost, this is the cost of spent on transportation. So the cost depends on when to depart. The cost of traveling by train is assumed to be a fixed number. 
So each player wants to minimize uh, his or her trouble cost. If too many, uh, if many players are uh, troubled by car, then traveling by train would be cheaper. On the other hand, if many players trouble by train, traveling by car would be cheaper. Okay. So now, so you see, um, I, I, I have to say, this game is obviously more complicated than ultimate bargaining game you experienced. And so some people might think that, well, there is no hope that the game theory can say something meaningful uh, about the behavior of decision makers, actual human beings in this situation. Let's find out. So how would you play this game? Well, I've already run this experiment in Germany. I mean, I was doing a postdoc in Germany, so then I did it. So there is a photo, but this is not Chiyo University's lab. This is the lab at the uh, Univers uh, Shiller Univers uh, Friedrich Schiller University of G uh, Jena. So I recruited 240 undergraduate students and uh, divide them into tw uh, 12 groups of 20 participants each. And the participants were paid based on their performance during the experiment. So this is the way we incentivize uh, the participants, okay? So each group, so group of 20 participants, they play this identical game 40 times, 40 rounds. At the end of every round, each participant is informed of uh, her decision, outcome, and the decisions of the other 19 participants in the same group. Okay, now I just show you uh, uh, the decisions by the participant one. So left panel shows departure decisions of participant one. X axis, horizontal axis, that shows uh, the round, the 40 rounds, and a vertical axis, um, participants want departure decision. So you now see that this participant chose 39 times um, uh, to use the train, okay? So this participant used the train 37 times. Only three times uh, he or she used the road. Left uh, right panel uh, displays the co uh, cumulative relative frequency distribution of uh, departure decisions of participant one. So horizontal axis, uh, departure time, vertical axis, cumulative relative frequency of departure decisions. So this black thick, thick curve is actually the prediction based on uh, game theory. So for example, this tells us that um, about, uh, let's see, the 10% of the time, the player should depart before 8, 10 a.m. And approximately about 30% of the time, the participants should depart before 8, 20, 20 a.m. And about 50% of the time, the participant uh, player should depart before 8, uh, 8.40 or 8.50 uh, a.m., okay? And then uh, about 50% 50, uh, 50 of the time, uh, the player should use the train. Okay, that, that's how we read uh, these theoretical predictions. So this thing, the line, is the behavior of this participant one, okay? So you can see huge discrepancy between observed behavior and a predicted behavior. How about participant two? This participant always traveled by car and departed within a 10 minutes frame between 8.20 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Never use the train. And the ref, uh, left panel shows uh, this participant's community relative frequency distribution of decisions. Okay, so, um, so this is a 20 participants' um, decisions then translated into cumulative relative frequency distribution of decisions, okay? Now, you can see basically chaos. Heterogeneous departure patterns are observed on the individual, le individual level. Now, I combine them into one aggregate data. Oops, oops. Sorry. So aggregate departure pattern is a very 
remarkably uh, close to what game theory predicts. So this study tells us that game theory may not be a good predictor for individual behavior, but good, could be good predictor for aggregated behavior. So here's a recap. So game theory has been used to analyze the behavior of players and strategic situations. And actual human behavior uh, often disagrees with the game theory, uh, what game theory predicts. But don't get me wrong, um, accumulated evidence in experiments um, is our not attempt to dis disproving the game theory, okay? Rather making game theory more powerful tool. In some cases, game theory accounts well for the actual uh, human behavior on aggregate level, but not on the individual level. So behavioral game theory may be able to explain individual heterogeneous patterns, uh, which is left for a future uh, research. So thank you so much for listening to my the lecture and that's it and enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.